Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jung Uk Sung. Uh, I am product owner of SoundCamp. And I'm really honored to be here as a present to introduce our application and the uh, future of music. Wow, sorry. Uh, music creation on Android. Uh, I think uh, this session will be very, very uh, interested if you uh, love to play uh, 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 music or uh, create your own music. Okay, uh, this session is consists of two parts. Uh, in the first part, I will explain why Samsung dived into this field and uh, the future plan for, our, for us. And the next session will be covered by uh, Mr. Pilbuck from Google. Uh, he will introduce uh, about uh, A-Audio, which is a new technology to provide uh, uh, low, rate of, low rate of audio latency uh, in Android. OK, let's start. Uh, actually, um, there was no big change in music instrument for a long time. But recently, uh, there are some important changes uh, are happening at once. Uh, the first one is analog to digital. Uh, for example, grand piano is replaced by the synthesized keyboard. I know uh, we cannot ignore the, the great sound quality of grand piano, but um, to get a more uh, diverse and complex sound, the synth keyboard uh, is naturally accepted. The second is hardware to software. The last one is PC to mobile. So these three keywords, uh, digital, software, and mobile, uh, made a new business model. So that's the reason why Samsung dived into this field. Actually, uh, Samsung uh, before Samsung uh, developed SoundCamp, um, this field uh, was driven by uh, just one company. I, I think you already know the name of this company, right? Um, they well prepared and they provide a very good uh, uh, developing environment to the third party developers. So uh, many uh, music companies uh, made a lot of profit with them. And they were loved by customers. Then, why these kind of things did not happen in Android area? Uh, there was a, because there was a, a, a just problem, uh, a fundamental problem uh, in all the Android OS version. Uh, it was uh, audio latency. Uh, audio latency means the time, timing gap between uh, micro input to speaker output, uh, including the, the processing time on the device. And actually, under 20 milliseconds is ideal for uh, music application, but uh, under 40 to 50 is uh, tolerable for, uh, for them. But the old Android OS had a longer uh, audio latency uh, compared with this value. So Samsung developed uh, Samsung Professional Audio to overcome this problem in 2014. And finally, we got the solution. And so after that, SoundCamp and other uh, third-party developers had a chance to uh, make a real-time music application in Android area. OK, uh, let me briefly, uh, briefly uh, review uh, our application, SoundCamp. Uh, it's a very professional application. And uh, this is the launcher. Uh, launch screen of SoundCamp, and you can see uh, there's a lot of uh, music instrument. Uh, it's made by Samsung. Um, uh, okay, uh, let me show you something. Um, this is a uh, guitar. Uh, each um, is the same shape of the actual guitar, and you can play uh, chord mode and note mode. I will try. Actually, I'm not a guitarist, but I can play. OK. Select the sound font to rock mode. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very easy, right? And uh, I will introduce another uh, instrument. Actually, this is not a, a traditional music instrument, but a very unique uh, digital instrument. We call it looper. There are uh, 32 uh, icon, right? Cell icon, and each cell has their own uh, loop sound. And you you just you just uh, play the the, the, the button. Uh, if you want to play music, then we can automatically synchronize the all sounds from each cell. So you don't need to concern about the, the, the synchronization of each beat or rhythm. So it's very easy, right? Okay, I can show you. Okay, just press button, right? We also have uh, FX. Uh, it's very cool function, eh? And uh, I will uh, introduce a new feature of SoundCamp. Uh, it's a smart composer. Uh, this function uh, makes uh, music automatically if you put just the, uh, several keywords. Okay, uh, let me show you how it works. Uh, this is the first screen of Smart Composer. There's a, a lot of music down. Then you can select uh, 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 one of them uh, if you uh, what you want. After that, uh, you can select some keyword from here. Uh, if you want uh, to make a short music, then just press the short button. And if you want uh, acoustic sound, then press the acoustic. Of course, you don't need to select anything. Then we um, uh, uh, make uh, uh, your own music, background music, automatically. Uh, this is the, the screen uh, to make, uh, to make a, a melody line of your music. Uh, you, uh, you just draw something in here, then we can uh, extract uh, the music motif from your drawing uh, uh, according to a uh, specific software algorithm uh, designed with uh, very, uh, uh, various uh, composing theory. Okay, I, uh, I prepared some video. Okay, draw in here something. Then we made a melody according to your drawing. You don't like it then, just redraw. Then we can another melody. Okay, play with the background music. We also provide the open space for the third party developers. Uh, if you uh, make um, your application with our SDK, then we provide a team link over your application. And it's combined, uh, it can combine with uh, the, the sound cam, uh, the, the audio data, for the audio data. So a uh, user can make uh, their own music with a different application. Uh, for example, uh, they can make uh, their music with uh, drum sound from sound cam and uh, there's some other uh, synthesized uh, synthesize sound from the other application. It's very cool function, I think. And 
SoundCamp also provides various uh, functionality uh, such as uh, multi tray recorder, mixer, equalizer, amplifier, and MIDI editor, and kind of things. So if you have SoundCamp, then uh, in any time, anywhere, it, it becomes a music studio, I think. OK, skip, skip. OK, um, it's not the end. So we are preparing very special uh, technology. Uh, we call it Vocaloid. Uh, if you make a music with sound camp and give a lyrics to him, then we will provide a singer for you. Okay? A Vocaloid can uh, sing a song according to uh, any melody and lyrics. So uh, let me show you. Okay, I will make uh, uh, my own music with the smart composer. Select hip hop. Then make a, a background music. Then um, I put the lyrics. Okay. After that, throw something. And make a vocal. Just wait here. Okay, let's play. <laughs> Actually, uh, I know it's not natural yet, but uh, we are trying to uh, our best to tune in. And I promise that uh, we will, uh, uh, I will give you uh, your private singer in the near future. Okay. And before closing my uh, presentation, I would like to give uh, big information for you. Um, 3 p.m. tomorrow in the, the Disrupt Theater, uh, we have a sound camp competition. So uh, anyone can join uh, this event and get the prize, okay? The final winner will get the Galaxy Note 8 and the others will get the other devices, okay? Please come and get the prize, okay? Okay, it's now time to uh, the Mr. Pilbuck from Google. Let me give you a chance. Cool. All right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Uh, so my name is Phil Burke, and I'm with the Android Audio Group at Google. Uh, so we're working on the uh, APIs that are used by various apps that run on all the all on Android devices. So um, I want to talk to you today about. Um, a new API called A Audio, which stands for Android Audio. And uh, our goal is to uh, improve the audio performance and reduce the latency. And we'll talk about a little bit about how we're doing that. So in this session, um, I'll describe how A Audio relates to the other APIs that you may already be using, um, teach you how to use A Audio, and show you how to get the best performance out of it. So. Um, uh, Time is limited. I'm not going to go through the table of contents. But uh, OK, so you're probably wondering why um, a new API. Um, you probably got some idea of that from a previous talk, talk, which describes some of the problems with the latency and so on. And uh, with the old APIs, it was a little hard to make big changes uh, to the API without sort of upsetting the apple cart. Making, if we made a, a lot of dramatic changes to the existing audio framework, then it could break a lot of existing apps that are relying on certain behavior. So um, we wanted to create uh, an area where we could uh, make improvements uh, without disrupting the existing code. 
Um, but we also wanted to make it easier to use. So um, uh, the old OpenSLES was a bit tricky, uh, not very intuitive. And so we wanted to make something that would just make a lot of more sense. So the old APIs, uh, there was the Java API for, with audio track. There was the OpenSLES API, which is the API for C and C++ programmers for many years. And then A-Audio is on that same level. They all use the same framework at the, by default, um, but we're adding a new framework under A-Audio. So A-Audio can take advantage of a totally brand new code path uh, all the way down to the hardware level. So uh, the API is very simple. We use a, a builder design pattern, which uh, means that you, you create a builder and you load it up with a bunch of requests for what you want, how many channels, sample rate, device, and so on. And then using that, make it like a, it's like a rubber stamp, and you can create as many streams as you want from the builder. So um, this shows in C code. Uh, so you just create a builder, and then you can have a bunch of set functions that will let you set the direction or the sample rate or whatever. You don't have to call anything. You can just make a builder and then make a stream and you'll get a default stereo output stream. But if you want to tweak it or get something a little specialized, then there's a bunch of functions you can call to customize the stream. Uh, once you, you're done with the builder, then uh, you just open a stream uh, using that builder. So it's very quick and easy. Uh, then some things you may, like you don't have to necessarily specify the sample rate. Uh, you might just leave it to the default and then AAUDI will pick what's the best sample rate for that device. Um, and if you do, then you want to know what it picked. So you can query and find out. Once you've got your stream, you can make, uh, you can query to see what you've got. Um, there's also this burst query, frames per burst. So what is a burst? Um, people usually talk in terms of buffers, but the word buffer is so overused that nobody really knows what it means. You know? So um, in this case, we refer to a buffer as like the whole big thing that contains audio that you're writing data into. And a burst is just one little chunk, a burst of data uh, that the hardware or the mixer reads, or the DSP or the DMA. So if you, if you match that burst size, then you can optimize your performance um, by, by writing just the amount that's needed. So in this case, there's sort of two bursts in this buffer. Um, buffer can be very big, but it, it, we've only got two bursts, which that determines what your latency is. So the, the hardware is reading these bursts out, and you're writing into the buffer just ahead of the hardware. So you can do a blocking write, which means you write data, and then the, the write will just sort of hang the sleep until it's done, and then you return. You render some more data, then you do another blocking write. So that's, that's a technique you would use if you weren't that concerned about latency. Uh, if you really want lower latency, then you probably want to use the callback API. So um, the, uh, and that will, what the callback API will do is it give you a high priority thread and it will call into your function. So you write the function like this callback function and it'll pass you the stream and a buffer that you can put data into. So you just render into that data buffer and then say, here it is. And it'll call you when it's ready for the data. So you don't have to worry about the timing of anything. Uh, if you want to do full duplex, which means like maybe you're doing a, let's say you want to wire a guitar processor. So you want guitar data coming in and then the processed audio going out. <clears throat> so if you have two callbacks, the problem is that they don't communicate with each other. So what you want to do is use the, an output callback and that determines all your timing. And then in your output callback, you can do a read from the input stream. And if you do a read with no timeout, then it'll just immediately grab the data, you can process it, and then you send it out. And if at the beginning, if you pull a bunch of data, you can get it down to a very, very low latency. So we're seeing uh, extremely low latency for throughput through the system, uh, to the point where you could write uh, guitar effects processors on, on some devices. So um, and if you want the low latency, that's not the default. So you need to request the low latency because it puts a little more burden on the system. So if you don't need it, don't ask for it. Uh, one of the new features in A-Audio is the ability to dynamically tune the latency. So let's say you have a huge buffer. You don't want that much latency. And just because you have the buffer doesn't mean you have to use all of it. So if you only use a little bit of the buffer, you only have a little bit of latency. 
So in this case, we've got like two bursts in the buffer, so our latency is two bursts, whatever that is. If a burst is two milliseconds, we have four milliseconds of latency in that buffer. If you find you have a glitch, though, what you can do is you can say, okay, well, let's just use a little bit more of the buffer. You don't have to reallocate the buffer. You just change the size that you're using, and that uh, can be done with a simple call. So you just check to see if you have an X run, which is an underrun or an overflow, basically a glitch. So if you have a glitch, you just make your you just use more of the buffer. So you can dynamically start with a very low latency and then just bump the latency up as you need it in order so that you still have the lowest latency as, as possible without glitching. We'll have questions at the end. Uh, one important thing, um, when you, uh, if you, audio doesn't handle the disconnect. So if you unplug headphones, you need to either start a new stream, you have to close the old stream and start another one. And when you get the error call back, you have to do that in another thread. So you have to start another thread or signal another thread to handle this disconnect. Um, it's a little more work, but it gives you the flexibility of deciding what you want to happen when the user plugs in headphones. Um, I'm not gonna go with that. So, oh, in the future, we're writing a C++ wrapper. So if you want to run on old devices and new devices, you can write to this uh, C++ wrapper and it will automatically use A audio on new devices and it will use OpenSLES on old devices. So right now, A audio is only on a few devices, but this OBO API will work on 99% of the devices that are out there. So if you use that API, you can get the, um, the, the benefits uh, automatically as more and more devices use A audio. So uh, that's it. So I think we're, so we have questions for both, uh, both yeah. Yeah. Um, you control. You write that code. Um, so you can uh, you can query to find out when there's a, a, a glitch, and and then you can decide when you want to increase that buffer size. So um, the philosophy has been our philosophy is to do as as little as possible in the operating system, because if we wrote an algorithm to tune it, and it wasn't quite right. Then a year later, we could release a new version, and that might be better. And then two years after that, you know, later we could release, maybe after two or three years, we'll get it right. But if we leave that to the developer, the developer could write something, send us an email, we go, oh, try this, try that, boom, within two days, you've got a better algorithm. You know, so if you can do it in the application, we think it's better to do it in the application. It's a little more work, but you can have it working by Friday instead of th two or three years from now. So you just um, dynamically, so you can bump up your buffer size, like on every callback, you can change your buffer size. And if you, increasing it's easy, the hard part's knowing when to drop it. But, but that's, it's tricky. So we, hopefully if you, when you figure it out, you tell us. <laughs> um, Excellent, does anybody else have a, a question? Uh, yeah, so do you know, has support been added for this new API in uh, SDL yet, or SDL audio? Um, have you heard this, like the big like cross-platform uh, wrapper for you know games and a lot of applications? Oh, um, I don't know if it's. it's I, I'm not familiar with that or whether it's been added for that, but I, I doubt it. This is brand new, so. Okay, okay. But it's a very simple API, so it'd be easy to add it to other you know other cross-platform libraries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would be very useful. Uh, okay. It already works in like iOS and Android and everything. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, should should be easy. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, round of applause to uh, SoundCamp. Um.